Hello everyone, I'm Tony Richardson with ToddExpert.com and today I'm excited to show you how to use global illumination to give your 3D scene some realism. Now, I've, I'm using Cinema 4D. Uh, this is the studio version and I am using global illumination to render this scene. If you notice, I have some text. I have kind of like a counter with this sphere on here, which may look like a pool ball of some sort. You can see a reflection in there. Uh, the reflection isn't this side of the room. It's actually the back side of the room, which we can't see, and it's reflecting onto the sphere. The way I accomplish that is by creating a larger sphere or a sky, uh, as some of you 3D uh, people may know, just created a large sphere that encompasses this entire scene and then put a an HDR image onto it uh, that's been converted for a sphere. So I'll show you exactly how I did this and um, one thing I may want to point out is global illumination and ambient occlusion are often misconfused. Um, global illumination is a little more powerful, a little more realistic than ambient occlusion, um, but you know depending on what you're trying to achieve in your scene, let's say you have some animated characters, uh, ambient occlusion may be exactly what you're looking for. If you notice global illumination, these shadows are quite soft. Uh, this does mimic what it would look like if this light were passing through a window onto this uh, counter or table and exactly how it would look with this material with these type of uh, you know speculars and, and reflections. So that's the one thing about this. It does sample it quite uh, differently than ambient occlusion. So it, it, it is just uh, a little better option for a more realistic render in the real world. But like I said, for animation you may want to use, or for graphics you may want to use ambient occlusion, which is a little faster rendering. We're going to start off with a new document, and I'm going to resize it first thing. Let me go ahead and uh, grab 1280. I'll change the uh, the uh, ratio to 16 by 9. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my floor in and or countertop and this will be, what will this be? Let's go with, I'll go at 2900. Um, Alright. And let me go ahead and drop the sky in or a sphere that will encompass the scene. And this is going to be about 1250. Um, I'm going to go ahead and angle this just a bit. Back out of it just a bit, not too much. There we go. Now, I'm going to drop in the sphere that sits on the countertop. He's going to sit somewhere around there. I'm going to click the center mouse wheel, and that way I can get uh, four different views. I'm going to choose this front view and go ahead and raise him up. So he's actually sitting on top of the counter. And there we go. Now, I need to, let me see, I need to create some materials. Let's start off with the floor. We'll double click and we'll name it floor material or no we'll name it counter and it's got a specular we don't really need that uh, but we will put a bump map on here and I do that by adding some noise and the noise that I like to use is FBM it's a little more realistic for this I'm gonna choose negative instead of positive uh, just to get uh, some recesses in there um, both look very similar but that's the way I'm going to choose. And let me see octaves. I think we'll go at six. Not that it's going to make a major difference, but in the render, um, you can play around with, you know, somewhere around five to seven uh, for that will be fine. And we'll drop that on that material. Now we're going to need the sphere material, um, which this will be the sphere. There we go. This will be the one that's on the table. I'm going to shut off specular, and there's nothing wrong with having that on. That would be um, similar if the light source were coming from a, a particular area, but being that we're using global illumination, it's coming from all areas, I don't want to muddle the image with specular. So I'm just going to use reflections because I want to see that crisp reflection in there to give it some realism. I'm going to, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I was loading a texture. Uh, that's going to be in a minute here. I'm jumping ahead of myself. All right, I think we're going to drop this to somewhere around 18. I like a good reflection uh, on my objects. And color reflection, I think we're fine there. We'll click OK, and I'll drop that onto that material. 
now I can get into the rest of it. Um, this is sphere one. We'll change that to sphere. And this sphere right here will be called GI, Global Illumination. And I'm going to hold Command or Control and pull it down. And I'm going to name this Visible. So, we'll just uh, to follow, if you're following along here, this outside sphere now is two layers. So if I shut it off, you still see it. If I shut it off again, it's gone. So I have two exact layers in the same exact spot. Um, you don't need to collapse one in or pull one out uh, for this. They can be in the same area because we're going to use compositing tags. So for visible, I'm going to create a material and this material is going to illuminate the scene. So we're going to use the luminous, luminance channel. We are going to load an image and I've already converted this kitchen probe, if you've noticed, uh, to the, the HDR image. So it now has been converted. I do not need it in its location um, uh, for this tutorial. I'm going to drop the brightness to zero. I know this that didn't do anything, but when we mix it, it will. So we're going to mix this down to about 50%, and that will that will bring down that brightness, give a little clarity. And remember, this is the visible. So I'm going to name this. Uh, Vizmat, Vizmat, there we go, and let's shut that off, and now we will put that onto the visible. Okay, and as you see, uh, because there is a, um, uh, a sphere right in the same spot, it's not rendering quite well, but that's okay. We're going to make another material. We're going to call this GI Mat and it's going to have the exact same properties we're going to create uh, we're going to load the image and we are going to drop the brightness we're going to drop the mix strength so if it's the same why am i creating well it's not exactly the same i wasn't 100 percent honest there we're going to change this blur offset because right now um it's very very crisp with its uh lines and things well that's not exactly how light works it kind of diffuses so what we're going to do is we're going to blur it a little bit just 10 percent so that's all we're going to do and that's going to just give us a more realistic render and i'm going to drop that right onto the gi all right so if you see we can see that right now but we're going to fix that too we're going to add some compositing tags and we go to tags uh, compositing right here and I'm gonna click on visible and go to tags and cinema 4d tags and compositing so for visible let's see what we're gonna do we're actually going to uh, shut everything off except seen by camera seen by rays we don't want it to be seen by GI we don't need the ambient occlusion this AO um, we do need the reflection and we don't need retraction, refraction, sorry. So basically seen by camera, rays and transparency. That's what you're going to use for visible. For GI, it's quite simple. We're going to click on the compositing tag. We're going to shut everything off that we can, uh, except seen by GI and we don't need transparency because it's already in the visible. So, and that's it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to now add an effect. So this effect is global illumination. And you can see I have ambient occlusion here. We're not using that. We're going to use global illumination. And under here, there's a few settings. I'll go through them. Uh, basically, we're going to leave it pretty much the same. But right here, this IR, um, which is a, an irradiance, it's, it's not a bad option for still images. But I'm going to use this QMC, which is uh, Quasi Monte Carlo. It, it, combining the two just gives a better render. You can look up um, QMC and how it affects. I, I do like that it's added into the Cinema 4D option here. Uh, it does give just a, a little bit better image, in my opinion, for you know global illumination. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and shut that off, and let's just kind of position our scene here. Let's go ahead and add some text just to uh, be a little bit more like the original image. Um, I'll grab this, we'll rotate him around a bit, and what are we going to want this to say? 
this Mo Tex, uh, which if you go to Mo Graph and Tex, you don't have to go through all the extrusion uh, for your Tex. We'll just call this uh, Global Illumination. Yeah, that'll be good enough. And let's see, I'll click on him. We do need to pull him down so we can actually see him. Um, and then that's probably want to pull him up a bit. Let's see. Yeah. Are we, uh, can we back up a little bit more? Nope. Too much. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of, let's see if I just messed up here. Hopefully not. There we go. All right. We'll leave it well enough alone. That should render out quite well. Let's go ahead and look at this and see what we got. Now, um, you'll notice a bunch of little squares. What it does is it samples an area and renders it, and then it samples a smaller area and renders it, and that's when you um, see the image get a little more clear. And really, uh, what's taken so long when it does GI, or global illumination, is it's got to calculate exactly how that light falls through here. And there you go. That is the scene. Now, I'm going to show you something here. This is using a linear workflow. So if we go to Edit, Project Settings, and we scroll down here and we check off Linear Workflow, you'll see the scene gets much darker. Also, I'm going to go here and just change this text. I really hate that font. Um, we're going to go with something like Arial, which is uh, hopefully going to make it look a little bit better. Where is it here? There we go. All right, yeah, a little thicker. And let's render it without linear workflow. I wanted you to see the two. Um, you can kind of rewind if you want to see it again, but remember, it's a little brighter. And when we render this, I think we're going to get a much, much better result as far as what, what we're looking for in, in terms of color and in terms of contrast in the image. So let's go ahead and check this out. It's going to take just a second here. Now these uh, yellow squares are interesting. Oh wow, that was pretty fast. Okay, so well, let me see. Yeah, much much better. You can see uh, the background. Um, it does look like a kitchen with a countertop. I mean, I think this looks much much better. And if you notice, you can see this reflection quite well in here in the countertop. Um, the reason why I took that specular off, this is a specular right here, that's actually reflecting a light, but if that light wasn't there um, and we had specular and the light source coming in, that's what one would look like, just a glint right there, except the light is coming from all around, so the entire reflection here would be a little muddled. So that's why I don't do it when I use uh, GI and a sphere for my sky. So there you have it, global illumination. Uh, with tutexpert.com. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and check out another video. If you're on the site, go ahead and drop me a line. Let me know uh, your thoughts and uh, go ahead and read an article and get yourself some knowledge.